Welcome back and a Merry Christmas to you and your family. I hope you had a lot of presents under your Christmas tree, especially those for astrophotography and overall you had a great time with your family. Today I have a treat for you too. We are returning to our nearest spiral galaxy neighbor. You heard that right, it's in the M31 Andromeda Galaxy. The last time we have visited him, this friendly galaxy that will eventually crash into us without any sophisticated programs whatsoever. We have just taken our beautiful mount, our telescope and have taken 30 seconds exposures of this beautiful galaxy. And I don't know about you, but I was already impressed by these results. But today we want to take it a step further. With programs like NINA and PHD2, we are taking some really long exposures with guiding and we are taking a lot of them. So stay with me today and look over my shoulder on how I will achieve that. So first of all, what are we going to shoot today? We are shooting the M31 or called Andromeda Galaxy. It's our nearest spiral galaxy and it's the biggest on our local group. In about 4 billion years our two galaxies will collide with each other but um, luckily we will be all already dead. This beautiful and um, really big galaxy you can see it with your naked eye when you have dark skies. But even with binoculars you can make out pretty good details. You don't need a big scope to see the Andromeda galaxy and, and I had some beautiful nights with my old telescope, my 70mm aperture and 700mm focal length telescope back in the day. And I have to say it's a perfect image for our image train, as you can see here. So what will we use today? It's our Zen of Star 71 with a focal length of 430mm. Back there you can see the flat, uh, field flattener and on the back there the Canon EOS 6D full-frame camera which is a monster when it's about low, li low light. On top of it is a William Optics 50 slash 200 millimeters guide scope and there it is an Omegon 1200M guiding camera. And you might have noticed already there is something else on our scope. This is a mini computer. It's a merely quite a free PC and I will use it to control my mount while I'm sitting in the warm apartment and the mount is sitting outside in the cold dark night all by itself. The whole image train is sitting on top of the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro which I have already discussed in an earlier video which you can click up here. My whole gear list is in the description below and if you want to buy anything of it uh, please feel free to use my affiliate links down there. It, I will really appreciate it and will help my channel. So let's get started. The first thing of course every night is assembling everything. So we will assemble the mount and then we will push the image train on top of it. After some test movements of the scope and the mount the first thing we do of course is polar alignment. And a pro trip here. If you are trying to polar align you need to take that cap off. Otherwise you will wonder why you couldn't see any stars. Not that I would have tried polar alignment with that cap on. After we have finished this tedious task, and I have to say I really don't like it, um, especially the altitude control is um, not that easy. So if you have any tips for me on how to do it better, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below. I would really appreciate it. And other people might learn a thing too. I power up the mini computer and I can now connect to it uh, via my computer in the warm and cozy apartment while the scope is sitting outside in the cold. Astro Patriot did a really good job on, how, on explaining how to install everything on a mini computer like that that you want to use for astrophotography. And who knows, maybe I will do a tutorial about that too. Subscribe! Connecting the mount and the camera in Nina is pretty straightforward and after that we can focus the first time with uh, the Great Batinov mask which is delivered with the Zenith Star. After that is done we are nearly ready to go. We have to align our scope with some stars. I'm choosing a star like Vega and after that my scope will move to that position. When my 
scope is pointing to the correct position and the star is inside the view of my camera, I can press synchronize here and now my EQ mod knows the exact position of my scope. I will do that again with another star and after some movements of the scope and the mount and I press synchronize again and the camera is then two star aligned. After that we should be able to get to M31 and as you can see here, ta-da, there it is. So now we are aligned and we have the Andromeda Galaxy in the center of our full frame sensor. So we could just start to take a 30 second picture as you have already seen in my video below, um, above. But we want longer exposures and for that we need guiding. As many other people we will use PHD2 which means press here dummy and that seems to be the software right up my alley. The best thing is you can even start it in Nina. Just to connect, uh, after you have connected your PHD2 with the program you can press connect here and we will start up PHD2 immediately. I will do a separate video on how to set everything up, but for now you need to trust me that I did it correctly. The exposure loop has already started and it shows me some stars. I have already focused the guide scope. And now I can click here to let PHD2 choose some stars and then with a click on that button it will start the guiding process. Here you can see the error in the right, ex right extension and the declination axis and the corresponding of the mount and the corrections here. After some minutes it will get much better and that's the moment we can take some exposures. And here we go. After 120 seconds of the exposure we have an incredible shot of the beautiful M31 Andromeda Galaxy. Look at that only auto stretch picture. Let that sink in for a minute. We have only done a 120 second exposure and we can see the Andromeda Galaxy and make out the spiral arms. I don't know about you but I'm as happy as a little boy on Christmas. Because I want to experience these things on my own, let's just take a 5 minute exposure with and without any guiding whatsoever and just take a look on how that picture would look like. The first picture you see is a exposure of 5 minutes with uh, proper guiding and this image you can see here is a 5 minute exposure without any guiding. So now let's do some more exposures and then stack them together and then we will see the end result. and really happy about this picture. I had a great night with the telescope outside and the result speaks for itself. Are you happy too? Please feel free to leave a comment down below. If you have any tips or trips for me, I'm eager to learn. Also, I really enjoy the conversation with you guys in the comment section, so please feel free. If you like this video, please press the thumbs up button. And if you want to know about my next videos, feel free to press the subscribe button too. If you want to see my first live video, you can click up here. So thank you very much for watching, take care and have a great and happy new year 2023 with a lot of clear skies. Stay healthy, until then.